O Most Holy Mother, intercede for us so that we may well understand the teachings of your Divine Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the explanations of the Fathers of the Church. O Immaculate Virgin, I offer you this work and ask that you bless those who hear it. And may it be for the greatest honor and glory of God. Amen. Cleanse my heart and my lips, O Almighty God, who didst cleanse with a burning coal the lips of the prophet Isaias, and vouchsafe in thy loving kindness so to purify me that I may be enabled worthily to announce thy holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily and becomingly announce His gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John Cleansing of the Temple Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area, with the sheep and oxen, and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables, and to those who sold doves he said, Take these out of here, and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, Zeal for your house will consume me. At this the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for forty-six years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. Comments from the Church Fathers St. John Chrysostom, in Ioannum, Homily 22. Our Lord did not perform any miracle at Capernaum, the inhabitants of which city were in a very corrupt state, and not well disposed to him, he went there however, and stayed some time out of respect to his mother. St. Bede, Super as Verbis. Moreover, he did not tarry there for many days, because the feast of the Passover was approaching, and the Passover of the Jews was at hand. Origen, in Ioannum. But what need of saying, of the Jews, when no other nation had the right of the Passover? Perhaps because there are two sorts of Passover, one human, which is celebrated in a way very different from the design of Scripture, another the true and divine, which is kept in spirit and in truth. To distinguish it then from the divine, it is said, of the Jews. It continues, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Alquin and he went up to Jerusalem. The Gospels mention two journeys of our Lord to Jerusalem, one in the first year of his preaching, before John was sent to prison, which is the journey now spoken of, the other in the year of his Passion. Our Lord has set us here an example of careful obedience to the divine commands. For if the Son of God fulfilled the injunctions of his own law, by keeping the festivals, like the rest, with what holy zeal should we servants prepare for and celebrate them? Origin. In a spiritual sense, it can be said that our Lord, accompanied by his mother, brothers and disciples, at the end of the wedding, descends to Capernaum, which means field of consolation. After the joy of the wine, it was important that they should go there to console not only the soul of the Virgin who had conceived him of the Holy Spirit, but also those who had received his teachings. For some there are bearing fruit, to whom our Lord Himself comes down with the ministers of His Word and disciples, helping such, His mother being present. Those however who are called to Capernaum, do not seem capable of His presence long, that is, a land which admits lower consolation, is not able to take in the enlightenment from many doctrines, being capable to receive few only. Alquin or Capernaum, we may interpret a most beautiful village, and so it signifies the world, to which the word of the Father came down. St. Bede. Our Lord did not stay there many days, because He lived with men in this world only a short time. Origen. Jerusalem is the city of the great King, as the Saviour Himself attests, 
Matthew 5 verse 35, into which none of those who remain on earth ascend, or enter. Only the soul which has a certain natural loftiness, and clear insight into things invisible, is the inhabitant of that city. Jesus alone goes up thither. But his disciples seem to have been present afterwards. The zeal of your house has eaten me up. But it is as though in every one of the disciples who went up, it was Jesus who went up. St. Bede, Super Matthew, 21, 12. Our Lord on coming to Jerusalem, immediately entered the temple to pray, giving us an example that, wheresoever we go, our first visit should be to the house of God to pray. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. St. Augustine, in Ioannum, Tractatatum 10. Such sacrifices were prescribed to the people, in condescension to their carnal minds, to prevent them from turning aside to idols. They sacrificed sheep, and oxen, and doves. St. Bede. Those however, who came from a distance, being unable to bring with them the animals required for sacrifice, brought the money instead. For their convenience the scribes and Pharisees ordered animals to be sold in the temple, in order that, when the people had bought and offered them afterwards, they might sell them again, and thus make great profits. And changers of money sitting, changers of money sat at the table to supply change to buyers and sellers. But our Lord disapproving of any worldly business in His house, especially one of so questionable a kind, drove out all engaged in it. St. Augustine He who was to be scourged by them, was first of all the scourger, he made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area. Theophylact of Ocrid Nor did he cast out only those who bought and sold, but their goods also, the sheep, and the oxen and pour out the changers' money, and overthrew the tables, i.e. of the money changers, which were coffers of pence. Origen Let us examine this attitude closely, which may seem to us somewhat excessive, since the same Son of God made this whip of cords for Himself in order to expel them from the temple. It is force, however, to consider His divine virtue, in fact, when it was good, He could undo the wrath of His enemies, who were numerous, and silence the tumult of their minds, the Lord destroys the plans of the nations, and frustrates the intentions of the peoples, Psalm 33 verse 10. This act indeed exhibits no less power, than His more positive miracles, nay rather, more than the miracle by which water was converted into wine, in that there the subject matter was inanimate, here, the minds of so many thousands of men are overcome. St. Augustine, De Consensus Evangeliorum, 2, 67. It is known that our Lord did this not only once, but on repeated occasions. St. John, however, refers to the first occasion, while the other evangelists relate the times when it was repeated. Origen. St. John says here that he drove out the sellers from the temple, Matthew, the sellers and buyers. The number of buyers was much greater than of the sellers, and therefore to drive them out was beyond the power of the carpenter's son, as he was supposed to be, had he not by his divine power put all things under him, as it is said. St. Bede. The evangelist sets before us both natures of Christ, the human in that his mother accompanied him to Capernaum, the divine, in that he said, Take all this away, do not make my father's house a house of commerce. St. John Chrysostom, in Ioannum, Homily 22. Lo, he speaks of God as his father, and they are not angry, for they think he means it in a common sense. But afterwards, when he spoke more openly, and showed that he meant equality, they were enraged. In Matthew's account too, on driving them out, he says, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves, Matthew 21 verse 13. This was just, before his passion, and therefore he uses severer language. But the former being at the beginning of his miracles, his answer is milder and more indulgent. St. Augustine. So that temple was still a figure only, and our Lord cast out of it all who came to it as a market. And what did they sell? Things that were necessary for the sacrifice of that time. What if he had found men drunken? If the house of God ought not to be a house of merchandise, ought it to be a house of drunkenness? St. John Chrysostom. 
But why did Christ use such violence? He was about to heal on the Sabbath day, and to do many things which appeared to them transgressions of the law. That he might not appear therefore to be acting contrary to God, he did this at his own peril, and thus gave them to understand, that he who exposed himself to such peril to defend the decency of the house, did not despise the Lord of that house. For the same reason, to show his agreement with God, he said not, the holy house, but, my father's house. For the same reason, the evangelist adds, his disciples recalled the words of Scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. St. Bede The disciples, bearing faith in the ardor of their zeal, realized that our Savior drove out the merchants because he had been cut out by the zeal of his father's house. Alquin Zeal, taken in a good sense, is a certain fervor of the spirit, by which the mind, all human fears forgotten, is stirred up to the defense of the truth. St. Augustine He then is eaten up with zeal for God's house, who desires to correct all that he sees wrong there, and, if he cannot correct, endures and mourns. In your house you busy yourself to prevent matters going wrong, in the house of God, where salvation is offered, ought you to be indifferent? Have you a friend? Admonish him gently, a wife? Coerce her severely, a maidservant? Even compel her with stripes. Do what you are able, according to your station. Alquin To take the passage mystically, God enters his church spiritually every day, and marks each one's behavior there. Let us be careful then, when we are in God's church, that we indulge not in stories, or jokes, or hatreds, or lusts, lest on a sudden he come and scourge us, and drive us out of his church. Origen, in Ioannum. It is possible even for the dweller in Jerusalem to incur guilt, and even the most richly endowed may stray. And unless these repent speedily, they lose the capacity wherewith they were endued. He finds them in the temple, i.e. in sacred places, or in the office of enunciating the church's truths, some who make his father's house and house of merchandise, i.e. who expose to sale the oxen whom they ought to reserve for the plough, lest by turning back they should become unfit for the kingdom of God, also who prefer the unrighteous mammon to the sheep, from which they have the material of ornament, also who for miserable gain abandon the watchful care of them who are called. Metaphorically doves, without all gall or bitterness. Our Saviour finding these in the holy house, makes a scourge of small cords, and drives them out together with the sheep and oxen exposed for sale, scatters the heaps of money, as unbeseeming in the house of God, and overthrows the tables set up in the minds of the covetous, forbidding them to sell doves in the house of God any longer. I think too that he meant the above, as a mystical intimation that whatsoever was to be performed with regard to that sacred oblation by the priests, was not to be performed after the manner of material oblations, and that the law was not to be observed as the carnal Jews wished. For our Lord, by driving away the sheep and oxen, and ordering away the doves, which were the most common offerings among the Jews, and by overthrowing the tables of material coins, which in a figure only, not in truth, bore the divine stamp, i.e. what according to the letter of the law seemed good, and when with his own hand he scourged the people, he as much as declared that the dispensation was to be broken up and destroyed, and the kingdom translated to the believing from among the Gentiles. St. Augustine. Or, those who sell in the church, are those who seek their own, not the things of Jesus Christ. They who will not be bought, think they may sell earthly things. Thus Simon wished to buy the Spirit, that he might sell him, for he was one of those who sell doves. The Holy Spirit appeared in the form of a dove. The dove however is not sold, but is given a free grace, for it is called grace. St. Bede. They then are the sellers of doves, who, after receiving the free grace of the Holy Spirit, do not dispense it freely, as they are commanded, but at a price, who confer the laying on of hands, by which the Holy Spirit is received, if not for money, at least for the sake of getting favor with the people, who bestow holy orders not according to merit, but favor. St. Augustine By the oxen may be understood the apostles and prophets, who have dispensed to us the Holy Scriptures. Those who by these very scriptures deceive the people, from whom they seek honor, sell the oxen, and they sell the sheep too, i.e. the people themselves, and to whom do they sell them, but to the devil? 
for that which is cut off from the one church, who takes away, except the roaring lion, who goes about everywhere, and seeks whom he may devour. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 St. Bede or, the sheep are works of purity and piety, and they sell the sheep, who do works of piety to gain the praise of men. They exchange money in the temple, who, in the church, openly devote themselves to secular business. And besides those who seek for money, or praise, or honor from holy orders, those too make the Lord's house a house of merchandise, who do not employ the rank, or spiritual grace, which they have received in the church at the Lord's hands, with singleness of mind but with an eye to human recompense. St. Augustine Our Lord intended a meaning to be seen in His making a scourge of small cords, and then scourging those who were carrying on the merchandise in the temple. Every one by his sins twists for himself a cord, in that he goes on adding sin to sin. So then when men suffer for their iniquities, let them be sure that it is the Lord making a scourge of small cords, and admonishing them to change their lives which if they fail to do, they will hear at the last, bind him hand and foot, Matthew 22 verse 13. St. Bede. With a scourge then made of small cords, he cast them out of the temple, for from the part and lot of the saints are cast out all, who, thrown externally among the saints, do good works hypocritically, or bad openly. The sheep and the oxen too he cast out, to show that the life and the doctrine of such were alike reprobate and he overthrew the change heaps of the money changers and their tables, as a sign that, at the final condemnation of the wicked, he will take away the form even of those things which they loved. The sale of doves he ordered to be removed out of the temple, because the grace of the Spirit, being freely received, should be freely given. Origin By the temple we may understand too the soul wherein the Word of God dwells, in which, before the teaching of Christ, earthly and bestial affections had prevailed. The ox being the tiller of the soil, is the symbol of earthly affections, the sheep, being the most irrational of all animals, of dull ones, the dove is the type of light and volatile thoughts, and money, of earthly good things, which money Christ cast out by the word of his doctrine, that his father's house might be no longer a market. Theophylact of Ocrid as the Jews realized that Jesus was doing all these things with great power, and because he said, Stop making my father's house a marketplace, they demand a miracle from him. St. John Chrysostom, in Ioannum, Homily 23. But were signs necessary for his putting a stop to evil practices? Was not the having such zeal for the house of God, the greatest sign of his virtue? They did not however remember the prophecy, but asked for a sign at once irritated at the loss of their base gains, and wishing to prevent him from going further. For this dilemma, they thought, would oblige him either to work miracles, or give up his present course. But he refuses to give them the sign, as he did on a like occasion, when he answers, this evil and adulterous generation is asking for a wonder, but no other miracle will be given than the miracle of the prophet Jonah, Matthew 12 verse 39. Only the answer is more open there than here. He however who even anticipated men's wishes, and gave signs when he was not asked, would not have rejected here a positive request, had he not seen a crafty design in it. As it was, Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. St. Bede For inasmuch as they sought a sign from our Lord of his right to eject the customary merchandise from the temple, he replied, that that temple signified the temple of his body, in which was no spot of sin, as if he said, As by my power I purify your inanimate temple from your merchandise and wickedness, so the temple of my body, of which that is the figure, destroyed by your hands, on the third day I will raise again. Theophylact of Ocrid. He does not however provoke them to commit murder, by saying, Destroy, but only shows that their intentions were not hidden from him. Let the Arians observe how our Lord, as the destroyer of death, says, I will raise it up, that is to say, by my own power. St. Augustine, in Ioannum, Tractatatum 10. The Father also raised him up again, to whom he says, Raise me up, and I shall reward them. But what did the Father do without the Word? As then the Father raised him up, so did the Son also, even as he said below, I and my Father are one 
John 10 verse 30. St. John Chrysostom. But why does he give them the sign of his resurrection? Because this was the greatest proof that he was not a mere man, showing, as it did, that he could triumph over death, and in a moment overthrow its long tyranny. Origen. These two, namely, both the body of Jesus and the temple, seem to me to be a type of the church, which with lively stones is built up into a spiritual house, into an holy priesthood, according to St. Paul, you are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And though the structure of stones seem to be broken up, and all the bones of Christ scattered by adversities and tribulations, yet shall the temple be restored, and raised up again in three days, and established in the new heaven and the new earth. For as that sensible body of Christ was crucified and buried, and afterward rose again, so the whole body of Christ's saints was crucified with Christ, each glorying in that cross, by which he himself too was crucified to the world, and, after being buried with Christ, has also risen with him, walking in newness of life. Yet have we not risen yet in the power of the blessed resurrection, which is still going on, and is yet to be completed. Whence it is not said, On the third day I will build it up, but, in three days, for the erection is being in process throughout the whole of the three days. Theophylact of Ocrid. The Jews, supposing that he spoke of the material temple, scoffed, then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and will you rear it up in three days? Alquin. Note, that they allude here not to the first temple under Solomon, which was finished in seven years, but to the one rebuilt under Zorobabel. This was forty-six years building, in consequence of the hindrance raised by the enemies of the work. Origen. Or some will reckon perhaps the forty and six years from the time that David consulted Nathan the prophet on the building of the temple. David from that time was busy in collecting materials. But perhaps the number forty may with reference to the four corners of the temple allude to the four elements of the world, and the number six, to the creation of man on the sixth day. St. Augustine, De Trinitate, 4, 5 and De Diversis Questionibus Octagenta Tribus, Questio 36 in an Ioannum, Tractatatum 10. Or it may be that this number fits in with the perfection of the Lord's body. For 6 times 46 are 276 days, which make up 9 months and 6 days, the time that our Lord's body was forming in the womb, as we know by authoritative traditions handed down from our fathers, and preserved by the Church. He was, according to general belief, conceived on the 8th of the Calends of April, the one which he suffered, and born on the 8th of the Calends of January. The intervening time contains 276 days, i.e. 6 multiplied by 40. The process of human conception is said to be this. The first six days produce a substance like milk, which in the following nine is converted into blood, and twelve more is consolidated and eighteen more is formed into a perfect set of limbs, the growth and enlargement of which fills up the rest of the time till the birth. For six, and nine, and twelve, and eighteen, added together are forty-five, and with the addition of one, which stands for the summing up, all these numbers being collected into one, forty-six. This multiplied by the number six, which stands at the head of this calculation, makes 276, i.e. 9 months a and 6 days. It is no unmeaning information then that the temple was 40 and 6 years building, for the temple prefigured his body, and as many years as the temple was in building, so many days was the Lord's body in forming. Or thus, if you take the four Greek words, Anatole, the east, Dysis, the west, Arctos, the north, and Mesembria, the south, the first letters of these words make Adam and our Lord says that He will gather together His saints from the four winds, when He comes to judgment. Now these letters of the word Adam, make up, according to Greek figuring, the number of the years during which the temple was building. For in Adam we have Alpha, 1, Delta, 4, Alpha again, 1, and 40, making up together 46. The temple then signifies the body derived from Adam, which body our Lord did not take in its sinful state, but renewed it, in that after the Jews had destroyed it, he raised it again the third day. The Jews however, being carnal, understood carnally, he spoke spiritually. He tells us, by the evangelist, what temple he means, 
but he spoke of the temple of his body. Theophylact of Ocrid. From this Apollinarius draws an heretical inference, and attempts to show that Christ's flesh was inanimate, because the temple was inanimate. In this way you will prove the flesh of Christ to be wood and stone, because the temple is composed of these materials. Now if you refuse to allow what is said, now my soul is troubled, John 12 verse 27, and I have power to lay it, my life, down, John 10 verse 18, if you are not alluding to the rational soul. Moreover, how can we interpret these words, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit, Luke 23 verse 46. In fact, all these sayings are not compatible with the notion of the irrational soul, and likewise in the psalmist, for you shall not forsake my soul in the dwelling place of the dead, Psalm 16 verse 10. Origin Our Lord's body is called the temple, because as the temple contained the glory of God dwelling therein, so the body of Christ, which represents the church, contains the only begotten, who is the image and glory of God. St. John Chrysostom, in Ioannum, Homily 22. Two things there were in the meantime very far removed from the comprehension of the disciples, one, the resurrection of our Lord's body, the other, and the greater mystery, that it was God who dwelt in that body, as our Lord declares by saying, Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. And thus it follows, therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. Alquin. For before the resurrection they did not understand the scriptures, because they had not yet received the Holy Ghost, who was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. But on the day of the resurrection our Lord appeared and opened their meaning to his disciples, that they might understand what was said of him in the law and the prophets. And then they believed the prediction of the prophets that Christ would rise the third day, and the word which Jesus had spoken to them, destroy this temple. Origen, in Ioannum, Tractatatum 10. But, in the mystical interpretation, we shall attain to the full measure of faith, at the great resurrection of the whole body of Jesus, i.e. His church, inasmuch as the faith which is from sight, is very different from that which sees us through a glass darkly. We have reached the end of another day of comments on the gospel that the Holy Church proposes for us to meditate on today, using the Catina Aurea. Thanks so much for following along. I ask that, if possible, subscribe to the channel, comment, like and share. May Our Lady reward you for this act of charity. And see you tomorrow, with God's graces. Please.